Thank you, Madam Mayor. The, uh, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Vieira. And uh, good morning, Council. I am very excited to present uh, my first budget to each and every one of you. And I do want to start out with fair warning. I know that Chairman Vieira recognized the uh, troop in the back, but I just want to let everyone know if there are any issues that that's my posse back there. <laughs> and uh, uh, the troop from Learning Gate, fifth grade from Learning Gate, has got my back. So just want to let everyone know before I get started here. So I am very, very pleased to present the recommended operating and capital budget for the City of Tampa for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2019 and ending September 30th, 2020, including the City's Capital Improvement Program for FY 2020 through FY 24. This year's budget theme, Transforming Tampa's Tomorrow, reflects the optimism we feel at the start of my administration. Our city has a bright future that will be defined by the work, hopes, and dreams of our residents who call Tampa home. I'm committed to ensuring that all neighborhoods participate in our city's bright future and have developed this budget around these five strategic goals. Neighborhood empowerment, transportation for tomorrow's future, housing Tampa can afford, sustainability and resilience for Tampa's future, and finally ensuring Tampa's financial stability. Like most American cities, Tampa is not out of the woods yet. The economic impact of the Great Recession has been long and deep. As you know, property tax revenues are the primary source of money used to fund much of what the city does. From public safety to parks and recreation and many other departments in between, the city depends on property tax revenue to provide the services that our residents expect. The recession has had a tremendous impact. Since 2007, we've lost over $283 million in property tax revenues alone. The city finally caught up to the 2007 property tax revenue levels in 2018. It took 11 years for property tax revenues to return to the pre-recession levels. Overall, the city has absorbed a total loss of over a half billion dollars in property taxes, community communication service taxes, and interest earnings. The budget we are submitting today will enable the city to address many years of deferred maintenance and service. It also meets our goal of ensuring Tampa's financial future. At the start of my time as your mayor, I'm hopeful and excited about Tampa's future. I'm pleased to present a budget that is balanced and positions our city for a prosperous future. The city continues to maintain healthy reserves while strategically investing in and improving Tampa's infrastructure. At the start of my administration, I'm eager to work with each and every one of you in transforming Tampa's tomorrow. So let's begin. All right, as you can see up here are just some of Tampa's accolades. We were named the best big city in Florida to live in by Wallet Hub. Fifth best city for recreation by Wallet Hub, fifth best city to start a business, and 20 U.S. cities with the best quality of life. Now, we're very, very lucky to inherit a city with so many great things happening. We're a city that was once the underdog, and now we're a city that's attracting top talent from around the globe. Tampa was recently named one of the top places in America to live by U.S. News. In addition, we have been named as the third safest city for cities our size. And that right there did not happen by accident. Since 2003, we have successfully reduced crime by 76% in our city. We're also one of the best cities for an active lifestyle and best for recreation. This is because we've made large investments in projects like the Riverwalk, our parks, and our greenways. And you've all heard me say it before, this city is on fire. And it was recently shown by the July 4th Boom by the Bay uh, event that was a wild success. 
you'd be hard pressed to find a list of accolades that Tampa's not on. This being said, we always have room for improvement and you'll see some of that in this presentation. Today we're going to talk about the strategic goals, provide an overview of the FY 2020 recommended budget, and then outline our capital improvement projects. All right, here you'll see some of the organizational shifts that I intend to make. These shifts have been proposed to streamline some of our departments. As our needs change, so does our structure to meet the demands of our residents. A good example of this is minority business development. At first glance, this division may look like it's only intended to deal with a procurement, but they're also tasked with outreach, engagement, and training to ensure our women and minority-owned businesses become certified vendors with the city. And that's why I'm moving minority business development into neighborhood and community affairs. Tampa's ground zero for sea level rise and rising temperatures due to climate change. So we must take action to harden our infrastructure while also looking out for the future generations to ensure that they're able to enjoy this great city. That's why we're adding a sustainability and resilience officer. This new hire will be charged to work with all of our departments and divisions across the city to ensure best practices to help us achieve our bold long-term goals. We'll look to cities around the globe that are leaders in sustainability and resilience and bring what's working back to Tampa to create a blueprint for changing Tampa's future. We were all elected to serve the residents and bring them top-notch top services on a daily basis. That's why we're bringing on a citizen service uh, center manager. This member of our team will oversee customer service response efforts across the city to ensure timely and complete services to our community. Our strategic goals are about planning for the future while meeting our current needs and include neighborhood empowerment, transportation for Tampa's future, housing Tampa can afford, sustainability and resilience for Tampa's future, and ensuring Tampa's financial stability. Now, I think we all probably want to be in the picture on the left right there, right now. I'm not sure about the one on the right, but that's what we're all working for right up there on that uh, slide. Right. And under neighborhood empowerment, uh, we will be discussing community connect opportunities, neighborhood leadership development, modernizing and navigating the city services, workforce development, and future leaders in action. <clears throat> Okay, first, our stay in play. As part of neighborhood empowerment, uh, we have programs such as stay in play. The locations participating in uh, stay in play this summer and that will remain open until midnight, seven days a week, are Copeland Park, Cyrus Green, DeSoto Park, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Grant Park, Gwendolyn Miller, Jackson Heights, and Spring Hill Community Centers. The uh, pools included are Copeland Park, Cyrus Green, Dr. M Martin Luther King, Spicola Family uh, Pool, and Williams Pool. And the stay and play extended hours in District 4, uh, one location, District 5, 11, and District 7, there are three. Now the Cascaden and Roy Jenkins pools aren't on that list for stay and play because they're standalone, but Cascaden is open until 7 p.m. Uh, Tuesday through Friday, 5 p.m. Saturday, Sunday, and Roy Jenkins is 8 p.m. on Friday and 4 p.m. Uh, the rest of the week. Just this summer, we had nearly 25,000 attendees at the stay and play, and that right there is saving our children's lives. All right. Our Operation Neighborhood Cleanup uh, cleanup effort is held every third Saturday of each month, and approximately 132 tons of trash and debris have been removed since the program's inception back in 2016. The uh, Mayor's Neighborhood University, it's a series of 12-week courses, and the participants cultivate leadership skills and experience city administration on a new level. 10 graduating classes totaling 414 participants uh, as of June 2019. 
and we're going to continue that program and then also bring that down to the neighborhood level to train our, our uh, community leaders as well. Now on to a department that I know a little bit about. I think I went one too far. The Tampa Police Department. You guys may recognize uh, Roy Paz there in the photo, the most energetic police officer has ever walked the earth. The um, Tampa Police Department's mission is to reduce crime and improve the quality of life through a cooperative partnership with all citizens. And as a result of working closely with all of our citizens, businesses, and organizations, crime, as I stated before, has been reduced by 76% since 2003. And we all know, <clears throat> excuse me, social networking has become the modern form of community-oriented policing, and it allows department members to connect uh, with citizen, citizens directly. And we have, to date, the Tampa Police Department has, not to date, in 2018, TPD connected with 11.1 million individuals on Twitter and 7.9 million citizens on Facebook. So they are expanding the outreach to citizens on a daily basis. And then talking about some of the uh, um, capital improvements, the police department, as you know, I talked about deferred uh, maintenance and equipment before. The cars, the life of a police car is seven years. The majority are kept 10, 11, and 12 years now. And so we're trying to catch up with that. And FY, FY 2019, 121 new police cars were purchased and we plan to purchase 115 in 2020. Now the uh, body worn camera program will be implemented. As many of you are aware, I implemented the pilot program when I was a chief of police. And at the time I stated pilot was French for we, don't, we can't afford the program. The body worn camera program is very expensive and that's why a lot of departments nationwide haven't implemented that. We intend to move forward, forward on deploying cameras for all of our officers because those body-worn cameras improve community relations through positive interactions with the public. It increases transparency and accountability and also improves the quality of evidence. The uh, body-worn cameras will be deployed from corporals on down and there will be approximately 550 cameras plus uh, spares that are, are needed. And the program will be phased in over the next few years. You can see over there on the right, uh, we have um, set aside money from the general fund to pay for this. We expect to get a grant from the Department of Justice, and then we're also gonna look uh, for private donations for that as well. You can see on the bottom what the costs are. The purchase of the cameras is relatively small in the scope of the program. The uh, implementation costs and the maintenance, the majority of which goes to the storage. That's, uh, that's what costs the most in uh, body-worn camera programs. But we are committed to ensuring the transparency of our department. Now this is one of my favorite slides right here. As you can see, the reduction in crime through the years. In 2013, 34,182 victims of crime, part one crime. And in 2018, that was reduced down to 8,174. Each of those numbers represents a citizen in the city of Tampa. So we're very, very proud of that. And the officers work in partnership with the community every day to reduce the number of victims of crime. Uh, since January of 2011, 572 officers have been sworn in and 217 of those were in schol on scholarship. The department is also committed to diversity, ensuring that, that the force represents the citizens that they serve. The Tampa Police Department has a very, very low turnover rate. The majority of officers that leave the department do so through retirement. Next, the best fire rescue department in the nation. Uh, as you're aware, Tampa Fire Rescue operates out of 23 fire stations throughout the city, 
including the newest station, uh, number 23, which is located in New Tampa. Our fire chief also serves as the emergency manager, and he leads the city in emergency planning mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery for major natural and human-caused disasters, as well as large-scale citywide events. As I stated before, uh, Fire Station 23 in New Tampa is the, that's the fourth fire station in New Tampa, but it's also the newest station in the city of Tampa, and it's operational having opened in January of this year. To go through the uh, districts, going to talk about the new rescue units and fire engines that each of the districts will be receiving. In 2020, District 4 will receive a rescue unit at station 15 which is gandy ballast point area rescue unit at station 14 which is the palmasia area and an engine at station 14 as well which is palmasia district 5 is getting a rescue unit at station 18 in seminole heights a rescue unit at station 5 robles park that's in the 2019 budget and an engine at station 18 which is seminole heights uh, District 6, a rescue unit in Station 8, which is West Shore, and a rescue unit in Station 9, which is West Tampa. And District 7 is getting a rescue unit in Station 13, which is Sulphur Springs, and that will arrive this year as well. Here are the statistics for Tampa Fire Rescue responses. As you can see, the projected uh, number of medical runs that they will have this year are 76,250, and they'll respond to just over 9,000 uh, fires. And you can see that's growing, but pretty consistent uh, through the years. Tampa Fire Rescue also gave out 4,200 smoke detectors between November 2017 and June of this year. <clears throat> now, transportation for Tampa's future. All right, we're investi investing in transportation for Tampa's future by taking the lead, investing in our neighborhoods, expanding rail, and improving public safety. Our transportation efforts moving forward will be focused on working towards the development of a first-class transportation system that's affordable, accessible, and innovative. We'll connect businesses and communities through multimodal options, including first and last mile. The e-scooters have been wildly um, successful. We have had approximately 230,000 e-scooter rides <coughs> since Memorial Day weekend. We'll improve public safety through Vision Zero and Complete Streets. And we will also accelerate neighborhood projects, sidewalk, a comprehensive sidewalk plan, improve street lighting and resurfacing, as well as encouraging walking and bicycling as healthy transportation alternatives. High speed rail, we expect to welcome high speed rail, hopefully in 2020. The Florida Department of Transportation has already secured the dedicated corridor for high-speed trains along I-4, and I intend to work closely with Virgin Airlines. Uh, Virgin Airlines, we won't have a plane from Orlando to Tampa. We will have a train, but I uh, intend to work closely with Virgin Trains to ensure that the Orlando to Tampa route is next on their list. All right, transportation's uh, FY2020 capital improvement budget totals $11.8 million. And this is our current transportation plan without the all for transportation surtax. As you can see, it's very limited due to the lack of revenue as we rely largely on gas taxes. In FY2019, we'll pave approximately 37 miles of roadway and in FY 2020, we project that we will only be able to pave 22 miles without all for transportation funding. To put that in perspective, in the city of Tampa, we have approximately 1,239 street miles to pave. So 22 miles isn't gonna get us very far. Now here's the uh, 
transportation uh, dollar projection. As you can see here, we have the limited resources I talked about in column one. But with the all for transportation funding, that triples our uh, available funding over a five year period. So without it, $51.1 million and with $151.4 million. We need that all for transportation funding. Transportation for Tampa's future also includes multimodal transportation initiatives such as the streetcar extension and modernization. And FY 2019 alone, the ridership was upwards of 450,000, more than double what it was in FY 2018. And that was thanks, as we all know, to a $2.6 million FDOT grant that uh, we received and were able to make the streetcar rider, uh, ridership free. We're gonna complete, uh, or institute the complete streets program and safety improvements for all of our neighborhoods. Another focus of our transportation for Tampa's future is investing in smart mobility options, which include smart infrastructure and regional partnerships. The smart infrastructure includes advanced communications and data platforms, resilient traffic signals, connected and autonomous vehicles, smart street lights, and our regional partners include Tampa Bay Smart Cities Alliance, uh, Tampa USF Smart Cities Program, MetLab Networks, as well and we also are going to have the smart mobility public safety platform the solar sidewalk project near perry harvey uh, senior park the smart led street light upgrades and connected vehicle pilot program and those are all in uh, being put into effect right now vision zero the city of tampa supports the vision zero initiative which is the approach that safety should be the highest priority of transportation systems and transportation design should be guided by the principle that there is no acceptable number of traffic deaths and serious injuries on our city streets. The city will develop a long-term option plan to protect our pedestrians, make walking and biking safer and more accessible, improve safety at street crossings, reduce the number of traffic fatalities, and integrate the existing trail system into the transportation network connecting neighborhoods and provo promoting viable active transportation alternatives. Next, we'll talk about housing that Tampa can afford. We are addressing the lack of affordable housing in a number of ways, and that is focusing on smart growth, affordable housing down payment assistance programs, expanding our inventory, offering incentives, encouraging innovation, and securing state and federal funding. The goals for uh, FY 2020 include increasing our uh, low to moderate income home ownership by 120 families, increasing in new housing stock in East Tampa with 75 new homes, increasing our rental opportunities by 200 new affordable rental units, and programs to lower housing costs through rehabilitation and energy conservation. Some of our home ownership uh, programs include the down payment assistant, assistance program, Nehemiah Project Phase 2, housing infill, and community housing development uh, organizations or CHDO program. Right, the down payment and assistance program. Uh, the Housing and Community Development Division will provide $1.6 million in SHIP, uh, community development block grants, and home funding for down payment assistance to help 120 home buyers achieve the American dream of home ownership. The Nehemiah Project Phase 2, uh, Phase 1 began in January 2014 and it included $1.4 million to build new single family homes in Sulphur Springs. Uh, 11 initial parcels were chosen to be rebuilt first because of their close proximity to each other, Sulphur Springs Elementary School and Spring Hill Community Center. All 11 homes were built and sold by December of 2014. 
Phase two begin, began in September of 2016, and the goal is to construct 24 affordable single family homes. Accomplished to date, we have 14 homes completed and sold, two homes under construction, and eight pending permitting. When all is said and done, the Nehemiah Project, in partnership with Rebuilding Together Tampa Bay, will have actually constructed 35 homes. The Housing Infill Project, although these are 2019 goals, 45 houses have been completed to date, and we expect, we expect to exceed the goal of 75 homes built. Our community partners are under contract for uh, 75 homes by, by Domain Homes Incorporated, 10 homes from Habitat for Humanity of Hillsborough County, and 10 homes from Corporation to Develop Communities of Tampa. All right, home ownership, the uh, CHDO uh, project. The community partners in that are the Corporation to, Devel to Develop Communities in Tampa, they're building eight homes, East Tampa Business and Civic Association, which are building six homes, and Habitat for Humanity of Hillsborough County, who is expected to build uh, 10 homes. And this is the 24, the goal of 24 home constructions that's part of the uh, uh, Community Housing Development Organization's goal. Rental assistance, we also understand that there are needs for renters as well as homeowners, and we have programs for both of those. The uh, rental programs include tenant-based rental assistance to homeless individuals and families. A total of 219 clients have been served, which is a 250% increase over last year. Rental and security deposit provides rental security and utility deposits, including arrears on individuals and families. The program served 343 individuals year to date, which is already a 150% increase over last year. The city continues to partner with Tampa Hillsboro Homeless Initiative and the county to address homelessness, and we have funded homeless programs with over a million dollars of federal funding. Next, we'll talk about sustainability and resilience for Tampa's future. Our plans here include the development of a Tampa Climate Action and Resilience Plan, uh, tackling stormwater management and sea level rise, and transitioning the city to 100% renewable energy by 2045, and ensuring environmental justice. Tampa's at ground zero for sea level rise and rising temperatures due to climate change. In response, we've added a position of a sustainability and resilience officer. Our approach to climate change will be twofold. First, we're gonna identify and implement initiatives that will mitigate the effects of climate change. And second, we will implement best practices from around the globe on ways that we can reduce our carbon footprint right here in our backyard. Acting now will also help us avoid negative impacts on our bond rating, and that's very significant as well. I'm going to look at some of the actions that have been taken. Uh, in this slide is stormwater, and I'll go some before and after pictures, and I'll go from left to right. The first one uh, shows the uh, drain clean at South Bermuda Boulevard, and that is the before and after, that's in District 5. The second one's West Laurel Street and O'Brien Pond, before and after in District 6. Next one is the South Church Avenue in District 4. Fielding Avenue, right of way, before and after in District 4, and East Osborne uh, Pond in District 5. Some other, some other projects that uh, we have endeavored, or will endeavor in 2020, is the Beach Park Flooding Relief, which is in District 6, and that is uh, expected to cost $825,000. The Everina Street from West Carrington to West Coachman in District 4, which will be a quarter of a million dollars. Lake Roberta Sediment Trap Upgrade, which is 440,000 in District 6. The Lower Peninsula Flooding Relief in District 4, which is 1.5 million. Manhattan Avenue from Vasconia to Obispo, flooding relief, also District 4, that's 3.15 million. Newport, Willow, Orleans, and uh, Watrous Avenue, groundwater diversion, 
million dollar project in District 4 and North Tampa uh, closed basins that's been in effect from 2018 and intended to be finished in 2022 that is one million dollars in District 7 and then the Southeast Seminole Heights flood relief affects both District 5 and 6 and that's a million dollars as well so we're talking about uh, nine million one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars in just those projects that's not inclusive of all stormwater uh, capital projects to put it in perspective just five of the the uh, projects that i'm going to name paid for through our stormwater assessment fee and grants include the 43rd street outfall uh, regional drainage improvements in District 5, Cypress Street outfall regional stormwater improvements, District 5 and 6, Lower Peninsula Watershed <coughs> Plan, District 4, Southeast Seminole Heights flood relief, District 5 and 6, Del Mabry and Henderson improvements, District 4 and 6. Just those projects alone are over $186 million. As you've all heard me say, you never see a uh, ribbon cutting for new wastewater pipes. Well, you will in the future. <laughs> Our water and uh, wastewater pipes are 80 to 100 years old, and the current estimates are that we spend $20 million on repairs annually, and that's only going to increase. The uh, Progressive Infrastructure Plan to Ensure Sustainability, or PIPES, is our plan to invest in tomorrow by taking a proactive approach to systematically replace all of our water and wastewater infrastructure. If we do not replace the pipes as they approach the end of their useful life, the reactive costs will continue to increase, as I stated. We will be unable to provide reliable water and wastewater services to our citizens. Traffic and congestion delays will continue to worsen due to main breaks and cave-ins. We saw that just yesterday morning at Columbus and Boulevard, and the potential arises for us to violate federal and state environmental regulations resulting in consent orders. Something we have to take action on now. And next is ensuring Tampa's financial stability. Part of ensuring our financial stability is working with our economic drivers, large corporations, and small businesses to create a business-friendly environment that everyone participates in. Our goals include enhancing small business enterprises, continuing redevelopment efforts, transforming the development services process, ensuring fiscal uh, sustainability, building and maintaining strong reserves, addressing the city's deferred maintenance and equipment backlog, and expanding intergovernmental relations. One of the uh, uh, promises that we are already fulfilling on is to bring City Hall out into the neighborhoods. And we've done that with our first Bridges to Business event that was launched at Cyrus Green Community Center. We started out with a limit of, I believe, 30 on that. The number continued to go up and up and up, and we ended up with over 100 people at that uh, initial event, which was wildly successful. The event included uh, city staff and resource vendors like the Black Business Investment uh, Corporation, of which I think everybody knows Al Lee, and he's the CEO of that. Approximately 30 businesses started the application process to get certified as either minority-owned or women-owned small businesses so that they could get on that vendor uh, list with the city. Internally, we are evaluating how the our city uh, procures goods and services to ensure fair and equitable and open processes. The next tour is going to be August 24th, and that will be at the Barksdale Community Center in West Tampa. And we will be visiting um, a different district each month until October. So we intend to have these events throughout the city. Next, we will look at employment. The city has experienced ongoing economic recovery through the past few years and has re uh, reached an unemployment rate of 3.2. Within the past six years, the city has performed better in employment metrics than the state of Florida 
and the United States as a whole, averaging a lower unemployment rate and higher employment growth. Tampa has been ranked fourth most attractive metropolitan area for corporate relocation and expansion. And we should all be very proud of those statistics. Next, I want to talk about uh, Port Tampa Bay. As you know, I serve on the board of uh, the port. The port serves as one of the nation's most diversified ports providing a 17.2 billion annual economic impact and over 85,000 jobs to our region. The port, Florida's largest cargo tonnage uh, port, handled 32.5 million net tons of bulk cargo, 1.5 million tons of general cargo, and exceeded 59 million in operating revenue in fiscal year 2018. Port is committed to spending $380 million through 2023, adding new cranes, refrigeration complexes, and additional infrastructure to expand its capabilities. And that's very, very significant to our area, especially the refrigeration uh, portion of that. Recently, the port announced that they had landed their third weekly container ship service from Asia and also recently announced uh, new bulk tenants such as Sesco, which is an Egyptian white cement company, and Ardent Mills uh, flour mill that will bore, uh, build on the port's ongoing efforts towards its diversification. Now, Tampa's airport. I'm on the airport board as well, and I say over and over and over, we have the best airport in the country. Frankly, I think we have the best airport in the world. It's considered one of the most user-friendly airports in the world. The airport ranks second in North America, should have been number one, in consumer satisfaction in 2018. Uh, Condé Nast Travelers Reader's Choice Awards Survey. A Tampa International Airport ranked number five airport in the country in 2018. And due to the increase in passenger traffic, TIA has planned a 953 million three-phase master expansion, currently just cut the ribbons on the uh, uh, second phase. All three of the phases in the, master, uh, in the master plan will allow the airport to serve 34 million passengers each year. During 2018, 21.3 million passengers uh, inplaned and deplaned at the airport, 417.9 million pounds of cargo was handled and 30 million pounds of mail was transported. And I know most exciting for everyone on the dais and in the city of Tampa is that my voice now greets everyone to the city of Tampa. <laughs> that was the number one asked question when I became mayor is when are you gonna change the voiceover on the trams? <laughs> I did not know that was such a big deal. I'm now looking at our upcoming real estate projects. This goes back to the statement that this city is on fire. I have never seen in my life so much growth in, uh, in the city of Tampa. Uh, what we have here is the HRI properties, and this was a lot that the city sold, the Jackson Street lot, uh, that we sold to the New Orleans-based HRI properties. It's gonna be a 230-room uh, Hyatt Place Hotel and 115-room extended stay Hyatt House Hotel. And if anybody wants to see how it's being built, just come up to the eighth floor of City Hall and you can look over and watch uh, as, it, as it comes out of the ground. Eris is uh, at Ashley Drive and Twig Street, and that will be a 34-story condo tower that will break ground in 2020. Uh, Riverwalk Place has gotten a lot of attention. It's a 1.47 acre site at Ashley Drive and Brewerine Street. It's gonna have more than 50 stories of res uh, restaurants, offices, and living space. And they have uh, taken down the existing structure there and they're gonna get moving soon on construction of that. Water Street Tampa, we're all familiar with. Uh, strategic Property Partners, SPPs, um, development in Water Street. Phase one scheduled for completion between 2020 and 2021. And as you can see, that's 1.1 million square feet of new office space, 300,000 square feet of new retail space. The region's first JW Marriott, which just was uh, topped off not long ago, and uh, 1,300 new residential units. That also, the JW Marriott, 
will provide additional meeting space that will allow our convention to attract larger uh, conventions as well. And we're getting a five-star hotel. The construction at the Heights, and that's, that is uh, progressing rapidly. The Heights will include a combination of residential, hotel, office, retail, and uh, market hall. West River redevelopment, we just cut the ribbon. I know um, Councilman Goods and Maniscalco were at the ribbon cutting for the Mary Bethune uh, rehabilitation of that high rise. There's a, over 120 acre area bounded by Rome Avenue, Columbus, Hillsborough River, and the interstate. There are proposed 1,600 new residential units in there. The related group and Tampa Housing Authority have partnered and commenced construction on five projects. And that will represent an investment over, of over $120 million. And that is going to transform the rest, West River. Next, uh, Lafayette Place, that's a 6.24 acre site that's located at the intersection of Kennedy, uh, Cleveland Street, and Hyde Park Avenue. It uh, will include the Lafayette Tower, which is a 40-story building with hotel rooms, offices, and retail space, a Lafayette Park View, 26-story tower with high-end residential retail and parking, and then Lafayette Central, 26-story residential tower and retail there. The West Shore Marina District, it's going to be an um, expansion of the walkable waterfront neighborhood down there south of Gandy. There'll be 350 uh, unit high rise condo towers, 150 slip uh, full service marina, 396 apartments, 300 and, uh, by the related group, 351 apartments by Bainbridge developers, and 160 townhomes by WCI. <coughs> The Midtown Project, that is uh, moving along swiftly, located at Del Mabry Boulevard and Cypress Street, right there off of the interstate. It's a $500 million mixed-use project that intends to cultivate those 22 acres of space right there. And that's going to be an amazing environment when they're finished. Now let's talk about our wonderful Tampa Convention Center and the renovation and expansion of that. Um, our, as you know, our convention center is a world-class facility that's currently undergoing a multi-million dollar renovation. It's because of facilities like these around the city that we're able to attract events such as the Republican National Convention, Super Bowl, WrestleMania, and the college football playoff, just to name a few. These uh, renovations, the ones that were recently completed, included a fully renovated and upgraded uh, restrooms, a uh, nurse food cart and Starbucks coffee bar. Coming soon is the Sail Plaza. These are almost finished. The Sail Plaza, Dats Restaurant, Big Ray's Fish Camp, and a modernization of the exhibit hall concession stands, and 18 new waterfront meeting rooms, which again will increase the, the size of the uh, conventions that we will be able to host. And we don't have a slide for the uh, River Center and the Boathouse at Julian B. Lane, but I just want to talk about how popular that has been just in this year. With two months remaining in FY 2019, they have already done over $4,000 in revenue from the River Center and Boathouse rentals, 20,000 visitors through the River Center, 27,000 visitors through the Boathouse, and over 2,000 hotel nights associated with both Boathouse visiting road teams. So that is wildly popular. <clears throat> Now we get into the fun part. These are the FY20 budget objectives. All right. Our objectives for the budget are creating jobs and growing the city's economy. Of course, keeping our community safe, enhancing the quality of life for all of our residents, improving the city's infrastructure, retaining and rewarding the best employees in the world, the city of Tampa's employees, balancing the city of Tampa's budget with, without using reserves, and strengthening and empowering our neighborhoods while preparing for our fina financial future. And what all the budget people love, the pie chart. All right. The city's net budget is slightly over $1 billion, as you've seen. 
It's a 1% increase over the FY 2019 budget, which equates to 13.4 million. A general fund increase of approximately 21.8 million is primarily due to increased personnel expenses and health insurance increases, as well as increased operating and capital equipment spending on parks, public safety and programs such as water backflow prevention maintenance, a body-worn camera initiative, and technology upgrades. This increase in the general fund also includes the additional required contribution of $3.3 million to community redevelopment areas a $45.6 million decrease in enterprise funds is primarily due to less water and wastewater capital project funding than in FY 2019. An increase of $4.8 million in utility service tax fund payments is primarily due to an increase in capital project funding. All other governmental funding increased by $30.5 million, primarily due to additional stormwater, transportation, various capital construction, community investment tax, tax exempt loan financing, and community redevelopment agency capital project funding. The gross budget is 1.392689581 to be approximate, or $1.4 billion. That's the uh, total appropriation needed by the city to operate for one year and includes the operating and capital budget. The net budget is just over $1 billion. And just to put in perspective, in FY 2018 budget, uh, there was a 7% increase. FY 2019 budget, there was a 6.1 increase. And we are proposing for FY 2020 a 1.3% increase. And that, as I stated before, that 1.3% equates to $13.4 million. And if this pie chart wasn't enough, we have two more. <laughs> All right. Um, the general fund pie chart on the left, uh, that's the budget $435.7 million in the general fund. It's a 5.3% increase or 21.8% million, 0.8 million over the FY, not percent, over the FY 2019 budget. And the increases, as, as stated, are mostly due to personnel expenses and health insurance uh, increases, in, including all of the other uh, increases that we talked about. Um, the general fund also includes the additional uh, required contribution of the $3.3 million to the community redevelopment areas. And the general fund expenditures um, increases are primarily supported by the FY 2020 increase in property tax revenue. A pie chart on the right is the enterprise fund, and that uh, budget for FY 2020, the net budget is 367.6 million, and as I stated, that's a decrease of 45.6 million from the FY 19, and that's because the uh, wastewater and water department decreases in capital uh, project spending. And we can see that as much as we value our police and fire personnel, they don't come free or cheap. And uh, as you can see by the, the uh, charts up here, fire and police are 59% of the total general uh, fund budget, which is $435.7 million. 59% of the general fund goes to our fire and police. Of the 219.1 million of the city of Tampa is expected to receive in property tax revenue in FY 2020, 25.2 million or 11.5 will go to the CRAs. We have a colorful chart for anybody that's getting ready to doze off. <laughs> and if you take a look at this bar chart, you'll be able to see that the uh, City of Tampa, our hardworking team, is delivering stellar services, top-notch services, with a lot less employees. And this slide is the perfect example of doing more with less. Since 2007, the city has reduced staffing by over 500 individuals 
while the population has increased and they have been able to provide a consistent stellar level of service. But take a minute to absorb that chart there. All right, position summary. These are the um, positions that have been added over the last year. I've been speaking to residents across the city and have noticed the increased demand for enhanced city services. And this is why we are adding 26 employees to the FY 2020 budget. These employ the employees will be in development services, deferred maintenance, sustainability, customer service, and public safety. Five of the positions will be in the general fund. The other 21 are other funds, enterprise funds, grants, et cetera. Our pension contributions. <clears throat> the city continues its commitment to its two pensions to fully fund the annual required contributions. And our city has never taken a pension holiday. And as you can see, the general employees pension fund is funded at a 90.8 ratio and the police and fire pension is funded at a 96% ratio, which is outstanding. All right, let's talk a little bit about the city of Tampa employee uh, health plan. In 2011, the city took a proactive measures to mitigate escalating health care costs, and you'll see a slide on that in a minute. Since then, the plan has avoided nearly $30 million in costs through integrating the wellness centers and wellness programs with our health plan. We also extended hours at the wellness centers, providing appointments as early as 7 a.m. and as late as 7 p.m. on weekdays at the Himes location and Saturday mornings at both centers, providing up to 72 additional appointments per week. And here's a graph to show you the national health care trend and then the city of Tampa's expenditures. You know, it's, it's a given around the nation that health care costs are increasing. So to further control the inevitable, we're planning to open a third wellness center, and you'll find that in the budget. We believe that engaging spouses and domestic partners to improve their health while maintaining the current emphasis on our employees will mitigate plan costs in 2020 and beyond. If you look on the bottom of this, the uh, medical claims data for 2018, those are the uh, patient improvement markers. 43% improved the uh, BMI, the body mass index. 52% improved their A1C levels, which are indicative of diabetes. 50% improved blood pressure, and 45% improved their LDL, or the bad cholesterol. So we're on a path of prevention rather than response. And again, we believe that we will lower our costs by including spouses and domestic partners in the year to come. Now, I must tell you that worrying about our reserves may cause me to use one of those extra medical appointments that I just talked about. This is something that is imperative to the health of our city. Our policy requires that our reserves must equal at least 20% of our general fund expenditures, and that's the red line that you see going through there. During the recession, as you all recall, the city had to draw on its reserves to continue to provide even the most basic services. Just like in our own personal budgets, we strive to build a savings account to cover any unforeseen emergencies. Now we must face rebuilding our reserves. We must be prepared to weather another recession if anything comes our way. And I can tell you that this is not inexpensive, but it certainly is necessary. <coughs> now, I would like uh, our general revenue and finance team to stand up and take a bow. Let's hear it for you. Yes, 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 yes. Excellent. Very good. This group you see standing here, not only did they develop this budget, was someone who lacks budget skills would probably be the most nicest statement that they could uh, provide for me. 
but what this team has done has resulted in 13 rating increases for our bonds. So thank you all very, very much. We appreciate it. <laughs> and as all you, you all know, the bond ratings are critically important for a number of reasons. Uh, they're the independent assessment of the city's financial health. It also translates to lowering bar, uh, lower borrowing costs and it ultimately means that the city would have additional money to fund our much needed capital projects. In other words, good bond ratings result in millions less in interest paid. So I thank our revenue and finance team. They are awesome. All right, now on to our capital improvement projects. And as you can see for the FY 2020 through 2024, our capital improvement projects total almost $430 million. However, this pales in comparison to the total capital improvement needs for our city. Our future needs will go way beyond the city's current ability to fund it. This is why initiatives like pipes and all for transportation projects are critical to creating sustainable infrastructure for generations to come. And now I want everybody up there to take a deep breath and get comfortable because I want to highlight some of the larger FY 2020 uh, CIP projects and give you a perspective on the needs that, that we're going to be facing. Uh, the largest projects for FY 2020, facility management, citywide facility roof repairs, 450,000, citywide facility improvements, uh, 250,000, public safety, needs uh, fire station number one wind mitigation 395,000 uh, number 14 station 14 170,000 Tampa Police Department wind mitigation district one 300,000 district two 300,000 somehow district three got a break uh, 220,000 parking citywide parking garage and lot improvements 1.4 million parking garage LED lighting conversion, 335,000. Parking garage revenue control equipment replacement, 1.8 million. Parks and recreation, Lowry Park dock improvements, 350,000. New Tampa Community Park Center improvements, 520,000. Babe Zaharis Golf Course, 90,000. Rocky Point Golf Course, 303,000. Rogers Park Golf Course, 193,000. Plant Hall improvements, 270,000. Strad Center improvements, 50,000. 50, Solid Waste Computerized Maintenance Management System, 1.6 million. Solid Waste 34th Street Water Main Repair, 181,000. Technology and Innovation, Public Safety P25 Radio System Expansion, 2.5 million. Public Safety Communications, 1.5 million. Customer Service Center Upgrade, 1.1 million and construction management system, 931,000. Transportation, Davis Island, or Davis Boulevard, complete streets and safety improvements, 2.2 million. Harbor Island, complete, complete streets and safety improvements, 408,000. Ridgewood Park, neighborhood resurfacing and traffic calming, 1.5 million. Sidewalk maintenance and rehabilitation, 500,000. Street resurfacing, traffic operations, 1.2 million. Street resurfa resurfacing alone, 1.2 million. Uh, traffic signal, 645,000. West Shore Residential Neighborhood Improvement Program, 960,000. Everybody still with me? <laughs> All right, stormwater, uh, beach park drainage improvements, 825,000. Lake Roberta sediment trap upgrade, 440,000. Lower Peninsula Watershed Plan, 1.5 million. Uh, Manhattan Street Flooding Relief, 3.2 million. Uh, Newport, Willow, Orleans, and Watrous Groundwater Diversions, 1 million. North Tampa Closed Basins, 1 million. Southeast Seminole Heights Flood Relief, 1 million. Wastewater, uh, Adley Pumping Station, 622,000. Dazzo Pumping Station, 1.2 million. Curran Digester Rehabilitation, 2.2 million. Harbor Island Forced Main Replacement, 3.2 million. Krause uh, Pumping Station, 1.2 million. Water, the Water Department, Sunset Park Distribution, 5.7 million. 
Citywide meter hydrant valve installation replacement, 11.2 million, and citywide water main replacements, $10 million. And that is not going to cover our needs by any stretch of the imagination. Next, I want to highlight what is, is happening and what's planned for each of the council districts. And Councilman Miranda, Citro, and Dingfelder, you can assume that all of these are for each of you. Uh, in District 4, the major 2020 uh, projects include Davis Boulevard, complete streets and safety improvements. Um, this will allow uh, traffic. This will slow down the traffic and improve pedestrian safety in the Davis Islands villages. Uh, Harbor Island complete streets and safety improvements. Harbor Island Force Main, as we all know, that has to be uh, replaced and it currently runs through the middle of Harbor Island and we will run it around Harbor Island so as not to, to uh, interfere with any of the residents there. And then lastly, the Spanish American War Memorial uh, Park, the Bullard Lights down there. This is a very important project and a very important memorial to the uh, residents down in Port Tampa City. Next, we have uh, some additional projects. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't go to the right slide. These are some additional projects that are ongoing in uh, District 4. It's a lower peninsula watershed plan. This is a stormwater project that's being designed and will eventually address flooding or everything south of Euclid. That $650,000 study split between the city of Tampa and Swift Mud. Uh, West Shore Boulevard in Gandy, intersection improvements, everybody will love this that ever travels through that intersection, which are projected to reduce wait times by up to 60%. I think people have birthdays in that wait line now. Well, hold on, we got more in District 4. Uh, the Howard Avenue, Decal, and DeSoto Avenue intersection improvements. This provides for resurfacing, complete streets, and safety improvements within the five-leg intersection of Howard and Deakle. Uh, Gandy, Sun Bay, South Neighborhood Resurfacing, Phase 1. This provides for street resurfacing and upgrades to pedestrian curb ramps within the Sun Bay, South Neighborhood. And for everybody's relief, we are working on the Del Mabry henderson uh, Flood Relief Project. <coughs> All right, District 5, the uh, major FY 2020 projects include the Al Barnes Park Modular Activities Building, and this will allow the children to get in out of the sun and the uh, rainstorms in Al Barnes Park while they are, are provided stellar uh, programs and activities by the parks and recreation personnel. The Southeast Seminole Heights Flood Relief uh, finished the study and we've started the preliminary design and that's also been funded with Swift Mud Assistance. Uh, Sulphur Springs Railroad Bridge, the uh, mural, to, we're going to rehabilitate the existing mural under the Sulphur Springs Railroad Bridge where you go from Robles Park into uh, Sulphur Springs and that will be part of our Art on the Block initiative. And as I stated before, uh, District 5 is getting two new fire rescue units and one engine. Continuing some of the, the uh, projects in District 5 that are active now, the Fortune Taylor uh, Laurel Street Bridge Lighting, that's incredible, anybody that has seen that at night. The Williams Park improvements that provide for the expansion in the Williams Park Activity Center and the 34th Street uh, north from Columbus Drive to US 92 East Hillsborough Avenue. This provides for safety and complete streets improvements and on-street bicycle lanes throughout the corridor. So that should improve uh, safety in that area. The Green Spine Cycle Track, that's District 5 and 6, and provides for the City of Tampa's first conversion of two lanes of excess vehicular capacity into an urban trail buffered by from motor vehicles exclusively exclusively for non-motorized travel of bicycle and pedestrian traffic from Howard Avenue to 26th Avenue and those bike lanes are are getting populated more and more by by the day uh, East Tampa neighborhood resurfacing 
This is providing for street resurfacing and upgrades to pedestrian curb ramps within East Tampa and is funded by the East Tampa CRA. Next for District 6, the uh, ongoing projects for FY 2020, uh, Green Spine Cycle Track that I just talked about, and that's um, through District uh, 5 and 6, the Lake Roberta Sediment Trap Upgrade that I talked about earlier, approximately 10,000 cubic yards of sediment needs to be jet dredged to restore the capacity of the pond, uh, which will address flooding issues and improve water quality. And that's, um, that is really a cornerstone in the Seminole Heights neighborhood. Uh, Lowry, Lowry Park Dock Improvements, this will improve the, the uh, existing docks that literally are falling apart there. Uh, also includes funding for a study of the Angus Goss uh, pool reopening. Uh, Southeast Seminole Heights flood relief. As I stated before, we finished the study. The preliminary design has started, and Swift Mud is helping us out with that. The Vila Brothers Memorial Park shade structures and trees to be planted in that park, and two fire rescue uh, units in District 6. The uh, active projects. The Freedom Park build-out at McFarland Park. City's committed to funding to expand Freedom Park at McFarland Park, adding new inclusive playground elements and autism-friendly sensory uh, elements as well. Additionally, improvements include shade trees and expanded parking spaces that will complement um, the American Disabilities Act. The design completion is expected in FY 2019 with construction to follow in 2020. Hampton Terrace Neighborhood Resurfacing and Traffic Calming uh, provides for street resurfacing, upgrades to pedestrian curb ramps, and construction of other traffic uh, calming related uh, improvements within the northern half of the Hampton Terrace neighborhood. And that's north of Hillsboro and east of Nebraska. Some more District 6 projects, the West Shore Area Roadway Extension uh, provides for an extension of the traf Trask, Occident, and Rio Streets beneath the interstate to create new north-south connections and improve circulation through the West Shore area. Uh, North, Florida, the North Florida Avenue and West Wilder Avenue traffic signal upgrades. This provides for the installation of a new traffic signal at Florida and West Wilder. District 7 uh, 2020 projects. Uh, Forest Hills Improvements, this project provides for the development of the Forest Hills Park Recreational Trail. This will include additional uh, 2,700 linear feet of an eight foot wide trail, including a bridge over the existing swale and seven ADA exercise stations. Uh, 46th Street from Bush Boulevard to Fowler Avenue Improvements. This project provides for the installation of shared lane on-road uh, bicycle markings from Bush Boulevard to Bougainvillea Avenue and widening of the existing sidewalk from Bougainvillea all the way to Fowler. The Babe Zaharis Golf Course, this project provides fundings for, for infrastructure improvements to the clubhouse, maintenance and cart building and pump house. Continued maintenance for the tree program and tree and stump removal due to age and storm draining. Uh, the new Tampa Community Park, this project provides for the construction of a training pavilion for specialized training opportunities for athletes. The pavilion will provide a place for batting practice, weightlifting, and aerobics, uh, office storage, and uh, other elements as part of the athlete's scheduled training or in times of inclement weather and intense heat, which is always. The facility would also act as a safe haven for athletes and parents when fast moving lightning storms roll in. This project will be a revenue neutral and will be pay, uh, pay to play will cover the operating expenses. In District 7, uh, you're also getting the um, uh, additional fire rescue unit. And here are some ongoing projects in District 7, the Greco Sports Complex renovation. This is going to be re renovating the existing concession restrooms and uh, press building area to meet the current and projected programming needs. Uh, complete streets, Bogan via shared use path. This provides, as I said, the, the um, sidewalks, 10 foot wide multi-use path 
and crosswalks for the bike walk plan phase one. Majority of this funding for design and construction is being provided from FDOT. And the North Tampa Closed Basins provides for the property acquisition in the area experiencing the most severe flooding for construction ponds and conveyance systems uh, if needed. And that sums up all of the projects in the districts. And I hope that all of you will find that the proposed and delivered budget will meet all of our objectives. And that will be creating jobs and growing the city's economy, keeping our community safe, enhancing the quality of life for all of our citizens, improving the city's infrastructure, retaining and rewarding City of Tampa employees, balancing the City of Tampa's budget without using reserves, strengthening and empowering our neighborhoods, and pre preparing for our financial future. So I thank each and every one of you for your attention, and I just want to uh, highlight that the budget public hearings, the preliminary, will be held Tuesday, September 3rd at 5 p.m., 5.01 to be exact, and the final adoption will be Tuesday, September 17th at 5.01 p.m., and as part of our new uh, sustainability and resilience, we will not be printing budget books. You will be able to find the FY 2020 budget books at tampagov.net backslash budget. Thank you all very, very much. I appreciate your attention, and I appreciate the working partnership that we're all enjoying and being able to serve our community in the best way possible. Thank you all. Thank God you, bless. Mayor. Thank you very much.